Greetings, I am Leto Armitage, and July has arrived with the songs of tree frogs. Summer, to me, is the gothic south of sweltering nights, where you feel the hot, sweating breath of the world on your neck, a world of night swimming and shadows made darker by long days. I feel it necessary, first and foremost, to correct some misconceptions that have plagued my quiet passage through June. Despite the persistence of rumors, it is untrue that I was being held in a labor camp outside Moscow after being captured with books stolen from the KGB archives. That is absurd, as that occurred back in the 90s and is not germane to current events. Today I am a humble man who spends his days lost in books, though June found me part of two cultural experiences. One was COVID-19, and the other found me at the steps of the Supreme Court of the United States protesting a landmark ruling. Both of these experiences I could have done without, but one happened to me, and one I felt compelled to stand up for. Yes, I believe in punching fascists no matter what flag they try to hide behind. As July broke, my friends lifted me up and did much of the labor of getting 1,000 cranes ready for publishing. And it is available now on Smashwords, Amazon, and Bookopee. It is a short story in the Yuri or girls' love genre. It is not explicit and not about sex, but about love, both the love between friends and unrequited romantic love. It is bittersweet and sweet, I think. It may be narcissistic for a writer to love their own work, but I do love it. It is also the rare thing that came into existence with almost no effort. There is something perverse in writers who take pride in the things that take the least effort, but that is how it is. Perversion is my bread and butter, though. Not always carnally. It has been said that there are only so many stories, and we tell and retell them. There is truth to that. We pervert things. We twist them and reshape them, both to make them palatable to the contemporary and to find new audiences for them. And that brings me to upcoming works and some plugs. Strap in, buckos. I have a list. The first plug is my newsletter. I will give birth to it soon, like Frankenstein, except with a keyboard and a tad less hubris. Only a tad. And vaginas will be involved this time. I will start promoting signups for it, first through my Twitter and then to other sources. Be prepared for my ramblings, freebies, and excerpts of in-progress works. The second plug is my new YouTube channel. You can find it at bit.ly, that is B-I-T dot L-Y, forward slash Leto's Desk. That's L-E-T-O-S-D-E-S-K. You'll be able to find links on my various social media as well. There I will talk about writing, gaming, and eventually I hope to branch into cooking. Additionally, I will regularly be talking about issues between men and women, topics that I think are important to address with a growing toxic culture of masculine behavior driven by misplaced anger. And in case you didn't know it, I'm on TikTok as well. My third plug is the first in a trilogy of novelists. The first novella will be a paranormal erotic romance as a college sorority sister attempts to recruit a college trivia whiz, but has to contend with his secret first. The trilogy will follow the growth of the heroine and her adventures. It is graphically violent at times, but will appeal, I think, to readers of Kim Harrison, Faith Hunter, and Laurel K. Hamilton, though none of them, even Hamilton, gets quite this explicit. Fourth, I have another erotic male-female short in the works with some dubious consent content, and I think it's rather hot. My affection for Yuri doesn't end with cranes, though, and I'm already working on a second short story, this time set in 1970 in the English countryside. A young woman from New York inherits an estate from the uncle she didn't know she had. The estate has been largely abandoned, except for one young girl, barely a woman herself, who insists on remaining a nightmaid. Both of these works center around characters with plots. But let's be honest, sometimes smut can be silly and fun instead of literary and profound. 
In that genre, I'm working on free use kink edits of two well-known Sherlock Holmes stories, with a third original in progress. The edits will be given away to newsletter subscribers first before being made more widely available. And subscribers to the newsletter will get to see the third original story as it progresses. And finally, a fun and silly sapphic piece set upon the high seas, using tropes familiar to fans of tabletop role-playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder. Don't expect true love in this story, but you will find out just how pervertible a lot of low-level spells are. And this one has not many, but a few tentacles. Well, that's it for July. It's time for me to go and listen to tree frogs, and see what echoes of Riley I find in my sleep. <laughs>